Hi, my name is Nick from Nick Church Photography and welcome to the latest episode of The Studio. So today we're going to be talking about backdrops and in particular textured backdrops like this in Photoshop. We're going to go through how I got from this shot, which was the original shot edited in Lightroom, all the way to this and we're going to go through step by step how I replace that background. Now this is such a powerful thing to have in your toolbox because to be able to change the background to any texture, any colour you want, helps you match with people's skin tones or match into company branding and it just means you can change the colours to your heart's content until you've got that perfect look you're after. Okay, so let's jump in. This image was taken from a recent series of headshots I did for this company. The lighting was the same in each case, the background was the same, and that means that in Lightroom, you can just copy and paste the settings from one image. Once it's right on one image, you paste it across all the others, and it just gives you a really lovely consistency, which when you're doing things like an About Us page for a website, that consistency is really important. You want it to look like it all hangs together cohesively. Um, also, in Lightroom, you tend to keep things more natural, and for a corporate, a corporate image, I think it's a really natural way to do things. You don't want to go too far with the retouching so it looks like a high-end modeling shot because that just doesn't fit what this purpose is. All right, so that was why I used Lightroom. The lighting was a fairly straightforward setup. So I had a main key light above and to the left. I think I, was, I had it gridded because I did want to just keep a bit of direction on there. The, on the other side, you can just see the um, softbox here. So I was just lifting the shadows on this side of the face. I did have a third light, which you can't see, which is, which is just pushing up here, pointing up here into the background, just to lift the background up a bit. It was quite dark in the area I was using, and without that, this would have just gone a bit dark, which would have caused us problems later on in Photoshop, which, and I'll come to that later. So I am always fairly fussy about lighting. I really like to get a very three-dimensional look, so I do like the, a bit of shadow around the side of the face, or in the dark side of the face. I like to give that kind of depth that you get in that way, rather than just blasting a light straight at the subject, which tends to flatten things out. So if you want tips on lighting, or we're interested in any workshops on lighting and how you would take this kind of shot, then please go to my website, which is nickchurchphotography.co.uk, and go to the photography education section. There's a few courses I do on lighting, some of which run on Zoom as well, so have a look at that. I don't pay that much attention to the backdrop, Okay, so this is a fabric cotton backdrop with a few creases in it, I haven't ironed it. This is in the way, so you can see I'm not particularly careful with that, and it just doesn't matter because I knew what I was gonna do with this after, afterwards, and I know that that isn't gonna matter at all. Right, so we know that the background is a bit scruffy, we need to replace that, so the first thing I'm gonna to do to do that is to select the subject. So the way to do that is just go to any of these modes because they all bring up any of the selection modes, I mean, like lasso, magic, wand, whatever that's called, they all bring up this select and mask option. So go into that and it brings up a separate panel, which is the select and mask panel. And there's various different views up here. So yours may not look exactly the same as this. So for example, if you've got any of these selected, it's gonna look like that. This, nothing particularly interesting is being shown right now because nothing is selected at the moment. So by default, there's nothing selected. So what we're gonna do is go, let's put it on overlay so you can see it. Go over to select subject at the top. You might need to check that you've got not one of these highlighted, you need to be one of these modes, and just hit select subject. Now Photoshop, I promise you, is gonna do a much better job than you or I are gonna be able to do. So it gets it right every time. And if we put it onto black background looks pretty good. You can see even the, the, the stray hairs, it's captured those. There's a couple of areas it hasn't got in here and just up there, you can still see the white background behind through the hair there. We'll be able to fix that really easy in a second. What I don't do is use refined hair because it sounds like it would refine the hair, but it just makes it look bloody terrible. So I don't know what really what that does. So if anyone knows what that's for and how you can use it to make it better, then I would love to hear it because it just makes the image look loads worse to me. So this is a fantastic starting point. I do do uh, decontaminate colors because what that does, you could see it change there. It makes the, the selection take into account more of the background color. So if you were to re replace the background color, if you, or if you had a very strong background color, it removes that cast when you can sort of see through bits of hair. So it's really useful to have that on. You can also play with the edge of the selection, so I can make it a bit bigger, or I can pull it in a bit, and it depends if you want to include, you know, these, these stray areas more, or whether you want to 
let them, I, I want to include those generally because I think it just looks really natural. And so something like that looks really good to me. So I'm gonna leave it like that, I think that's right. And then it will output this to a new layer and layer mask so you never lose the original. So the original is still background, that just goes hidden. And then what we can see here is we've just got the original image and that mask that selected it. And that's a fantastic starting point because we can now just put behind here anything that we want. What we are just gonna very quickly do is just go and fix up these areas here. So I could go and add to the mask and delete these bits, but probably in this case, much easier it's gonna to be to go to the actual image and just go and cl clone a bit of that hair there. So let's just go and take that bit and just brush that in there. This would be much easier than going through. Where was the other bit? I think it was down here, wasn't it? Okay, that'll be fine. Yeah, that's good. So that now won't shine through as being lighter. Perfect. All right, so let's move on to creating that backdrop. When doing the background, I really like to start with the textures. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is put a couple of textures on here. Now these two are from a set of open source textures that I found on the internet. So I will link to these underneath this video in the description so you can go and get the same ones. All right, so I'm just gonna put one on there. Let's stretch that out. Now the reason I use two is just that I find you can just get a bit more interesting effects by having two, but um, that's just my own crazy way of doing things. Add it to the list. So let's just bring that down, just make that fit the frame completely. I'm just using shift here to just to move on one axis. And then let's bring the other one in. Oh, where are we? There we are. Oh, we got to, sorry, we got to apply that transformation with enter. So drag that one in and drop that one. And now let's do the same. So shift, drag, just to get that to the edge. And it's a little bit short. Oops. And shift drag on that one as well, just so it completely fills the background. Good, all right then. Obviously we want our subject in front of that. So what we're gonna do, because we want both of them, we are going to have probably, I think I'll probably use overlay for these so overlay blend mode tends to give me the kind of effects that I'm looking for. And then we can just change the opacity for those. And you can kind of get a combination of both of these in. And I just like that way of doing it is what I did on the original delivery for this, for this project. And I just, it just works really well. What I do do is take up. So the first thing, two things I'm going to do for these backdrops. One is to um, add some saturation control because I want to desaturate it because I don't want the reds coming in because I want to be able to change the color completely. And also I'm going to blur it a little bit so that it pushes it back a bit out, out so it's not so crisp. We want it to be a secondary thing. So I'm going to create smart objects for both of these because the blur, especially the Gaussian blur, is something that's a bit of a subjective thing and sometimes you want to adjust it and if you just don't have a smart object, then you can't adjust it. You have to start with a new layer each time. So. To this one, I'm just gonna add saturation. I'm gonna take the saturation right down. I'm gonna make that a clipping mask because I don't want that to apply to this layer. And I'm also going to then add my Gaussian blur. I'm just gonna do the same for this one. So let's add, where's it gone? Add Take the saturation down for that one as well. Make that one a clipping mask also. And then add a blur to this one. And then with those, with a combination of the blur percentage or, or the number of pixels rather, and the amount of opacity in that top one to how much you're showing through, then you can really can quite control exactly how that's going to appear. So I think that's probably about right. What's that one? See, with, with a smart object, you can always go back and change the appearance of any of these. So that's probably okay. All 
Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So let's just use that for now. So we've, we've got that one. Just gonna change that blur, I think, a little bit. Make this one a bit higher so this one's a bit more. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, happy with that. Okay, so what we can do now is, once we've got those textures, we can just put in a solid color underneath it and I had a feeling when I delivered this first time, the, the color that I liked most was a really lovely dark, a dark color. Now what we're gonna do is put that beneath those backdrops, beneath those textures rather. I think that looks really, that looks really nice. Just really like the, the way it complements the outfits, the, the, the um, branding. So I think that's pretty good and then Let's just move it. So I've just gone back up to the subject. I'm just gonna move the subject over with free transform because I don't wanna write in the center, especially being that she's facing this way. So if a, if a model is facing or a subject is facing with her body facing into the image, you wanna leave it a bit more negative space over here because she's facing that way a little bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's looking good. The one thing left to do now is we want to make a some shadows that give it just a sense that it's in the same image. So until you do that, even if you put a bit of blur in the background, which I did, it can have the effect that it still looks a little bit like the subjects just been kind of pasted on, which let's face it, they have been. So the bit of natural looking shadow is gonna do be the two things that's gonna bring these two main layers together. The two main layers being the background, which is effectively all of this stuff, and then the subject. So to bring those together, we want that natural shadow, which is gonna look like the light is hitting her and casting a shadow on the background. We want to create a really natural looking shadow behind the subject on the background. All right, now what I've found is that however carefully I do this, whatever low flow I use with a brush, I can never brush a shadow in accurately, and it just always looks like a toddler has done it. So what I always do is, if I can, use my knowledge of how light falls on the subject from this direction and use that to create the shadow for me. Let, let Photoshop do the heavy lifting because it's gonna be much more accurate than us trying to do it. And if you've seen my other video where I'm doing a group shot, I do a composite group shot in a back in a replaced backdrop there as well, then you'll have seen a similar technique. So do look at that, that one afterwards. That's quite a complex long video. So I'll link to that video on screen now and I'll do it at the, at the end as well also. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is just tidy up this group here, because this was all of the background. So let's, um, we're gonna do a group from there, so let's call that background. Oops. So that's made things a bit tight. Now we want them in one block because it's gonna make the next bit much easier. So what I'm gonna do is create a curves adjustment. And I'm gonna make the thing a, a lot darker. And now, one reason that this is always going to be more accurate is because shadow isn't just just darkness being painted onto a single colour, it's actually the whole texture, everything just getting darker, but for a certain area and in certain ways. So what we want to do there is just bring this one down. Now what we're going to do is copy this mask, and we're going to, how do we do that? We're going to drop it onto there to replace that. Right, so that's copied that layer mask on. I just need to actually draw some black into here because that mask was moved when, I, when we just moved the subject over to the other side. But it doesn't really matter particularly, I don't think, anyway. So what we've got now is we have got the darker bit Remember, we moved the curves adjustment down, but now we've used the same mask. So it is a bit darker, but it's just behind her at the moment. And we can prove that because if we then do a transform 
and move it, move it out, we can see there is the shadow behind her. Okay, now the, the things that determine how natural this is gonna look is the softness of the shadow, but also where it's placed. So you can kind of make her look really close to the background by doing that, or you can make her look much further away to the background from the background by doing something like that. So you completely able to adjust it and just get it looking right. Now that's obviously a bit harsh because we don't want it harsh like that. So all we're gonna do is change the feather to be softer and softer and softer until we get something that resembles the sort of shadow. Now what happens when you, so that, that looks about as soft as I want it, but what does happen is that when you change the feathering, it feathers inward, so it doesn't get bigger. So it does mean that sometimes you may want to increase the size of that, of that shadow as well, because otherwise it's gonna get smaller and smaller the more you feather it down. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Quite happy with that. Again, we've got the mask has moved over, and so I'm just gonna just paint that bit back in. There, so we've got a really natural looking shadow there. I might just adjust the feather a little bit more. And then we can always, don't forget, if it looks too strong, we can use the opacity and bring that down to something that's just gonna look right. Because what you want it to do is just to give the impression that there's a bit of dark area behind it, and that's all you need. It doesn't need to be really strong. So something like that is more than enough to give the indication that this subject is connected to this background because it's creating that shadow. And that shadow is now automatically taken on her form and drifted out and faded out to the, with the feathering to be accurate. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. So I'm really happy with this. I think this technique is so quick to do. Once you've done a few of these, this takes literally five minutes to get to this point. Now the beauty of it is, is if we go back into the background, with all of that done, we can now just go into this and we can change that background to any color we want. That doesn't go, um, but let's see, where would we wanna go? Maybe a nice kind of browny kind of color might work quite well if it was quite dark. Yeah, so that, that looks nice as well. And you can just make so many just changes to this now without having to do anything else. And actually you could save this without the subject in and that is just a pretty good go-to setup to just chuck in a subject and then be able to change the background to fit any particular branding. But as I said, I, re I really do like that blue. I think that blue goes really nicely. It really matches her eyes, her skin tone and the the, branding, the branded colors there as well. I think it all goes really well. So please do give this video a like. Selfishly, it's lovely to see when people are enjoying the content, but it also means that other people are gonna find it much more easy, so please do that. Any other questions, or if you've got any suggestions on future content, just stick it in the comments. That'd be great to see that as well. At Nick Church Photography, I run a wide range of photography workshops, both on Zoom and also based at my studio in Bristol. So these cover all sorts of things from lighting, like this studio shot, through to Lightroom editing. There's Photoshop courses, both beginners and advanced that run really well over Zoom. And also if you're looking at photography as a career, then I do a suite of business coaching courses and also a wedding workshop, which teaches you everything you need to know about how to be a wedding photographer. So if that's of any use, then there is a link in the description. Please do get in touch and have a browse through all the different options. I'd love to hear from you. Finally, please do subscribe to the channel and I really look forward to seeing you next time at the studio.